discussing the issues and celebrating the successes of the African-American community. This is Another View. everyone and welcome to another view my thanks to co-producer lisa godley who produced and hosted some great shows while i was on vacation thanks so much lisa tonight we're talking about obesity nutrition and your health we are all struggling with weight issues and in the african-american community the numbers are frightening according to a study by the center for disease control 80 percent of african-american women in this country are overweight or obese too much weight leads to all kinds of illnesses, from heart disease to stroke to high blood pressure to diabetes, just to name a few. And then there are the cultural and environmental issues that contribute to bad eating habits. The great news is that something can be done about it. Joining us to talk about the ways to fight the fat are cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby, nutritionist Bonnie Taswell, and the general manager of the Five Points Community Farm Market, Beverly Cell. Welcome, everybody, to another view. Okay. Thanks so much. Eighty percent of African-American women. Okay, I gotta put myself in that category. I hate to say it, but but what's going on, Dr. Newby, that, that we're having such a problem with obesity? Um, I've always been convinced that it becomes a lifestyle, cultural scenario. And I, and I say that's across the board. I don't care what race you are. That's an American thing. It's become into what I think is the main problem. Anywhere you go now, you go to um, weddings, funerals, anniversary parties, um, office parties, is all based on food. And that is always the, the first thing people want to do is feed you. Yeah, because that's the first thing they talk about. What and, are we going to serve? And yeah. what's easy, they mm -hmm. go to places that, you know, this fast food thing when you see everything's fried. Um, you know, the, the choices are, it's always like I went to a meeting a week ago and all they had was, um, uh, muffins, Danish, and orange juice. And I guess that was a healthy part of all that, but, <laughs> but I say all that to say that if you look at the philosophy is that you eat these types of things because they're quick, they're easy to put on a, on, a, on a plate, and people look at it saying, oh, this is what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. So what happens over time is everybody's busy, everybody um, really doesn't make the time to exercise like they should, and if you're eating this type of food, you know, uh, every, everything that's not used as energy is going to be stored as fat. And so, and that just starts to accumulate. It starts to accumulate. Now, it's bad, uh, Bonnie, from a cultural perspective, I mean, as Dr. Newby was saying, we always eat, but in the African American community, everything is wrapped around food, isn't it? It sure is. Um, like you said, every event that most families have, food is the center of attention. Most people entertain in their kitchen. Uh, they talk about what they're going to have at family events. Uh, when you go to a party, they're just leaving food and some will go out and socialize a little bit more and have more food or drink. And in addition to the food, beverage is another thing that has really packed on the pounds. Uh, because folks say, well, I don't eat that much. But what are they consuming? The soft drinks, the mixed drinks, the combination drinks. Uh, even going to a health food um, place and having something like a, one of those uh, icy type things, it's loaded with calories. I mean, there are some good things, but there's also sugar. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are a lot of hidden fats, sweets that folks don't think about. One of the things that we have, a, have trouble with are fresh vegetables, mm -hmm. which I think, Bev, is the reason mm -hmm. why the um, uh, Five Points Community Farm Market mm -hmm. is so critical. Yes. Um, in, it's located in Norfolk, mm -hmm. um, but you get people who come from all over. They come from all over, but we wanted to be in that neighborhood uh, for, uh, well, actually, you know, uh, we were actually outed from our neighborhood. We, uh, <laughs> the landlord went up on our rent and we had to move. So we're very fortunate to be in this community because one of the first things that we wanted to look at was, is it on a bus line? Because again, we don't want to confuse that local fresh produce is only for a certain clientele. It's not, it's for all of us. And the closer you are to this fresh local food, the, the more nutritional value you're going to get from it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we wanted to be where we are. We're a bigger space now. Uh, we're working with a lot more farmers than we've ever worked with um, and learning lots. But from an educational standpoint also, you were telling me, for example, that there you have some children yes. or, or young people working with you this summer who had not yeah. been exposed 
before to fresh vegetables or how they're actually grown, well, et cetera? Well, we make assumptions. And uh, when you're 12, 14 years old, and um, I had a young man helping me restock the potatoes, and he came over to me and said, my hands are dirty. He said, these, have these been on the ground? And I said, son, they've been in the ground. <laughs> because yeah. their association, again, 10 or 12 years old, their association is a bag in a freezer. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have not been exposed to it. Uh, in the same way with a lot of the fresh local produce that we have, a lot of the adults haven't been exposed to it, in all fairness, because of our fast society that mm -hmm. we live in. Uh, so we're trying uh, our best to re-educate and bring it back to where it was so that we can uh, share in some of this. Now, you brought us some fresh, fresh vegetables, and I know we took a look at that, but is it more expensive? No. And the, I think that's I a, mean, a misconception, us, isn't it? You pay us now or you pay us later in your health. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, and um, our prices are probably as low as, or in some cases, lower. Uh, we've got, uh, for instance, you can get a whole case or a whole bushel of um, S Silver Queen corn for like 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to encourage people to do is to get it while it's fresh like this and then, you know, shuck it, strip it, and put it in your freezer, and you're going to have food throughout the winter. Well, it's now, okay, but let's talk about that for a second, because I just came back, Bonnie, from yes. my family reunion. And my aunts and, and uncles and so forth who were used to fresh veggies and, and shucking and, and putting them in, you know, preserving them and so forth, that's a skill that a lot of people uh, today don't have. Uh -huh. So how do we get past the fear, if you will, of preparing fresh vegetables, for example. Well, I um, hope Extension is offering classes, and we also um, do workshops in conjunction with Southern States, and we actually do food preservation workshops, and we'll be uh, doing some mini workshops uh, with Master Gardeners and some other uh, local organizations that want to learn how to do that. Some of the churches we've been working with with a number of years. And I do have new pressure canning equipment in the office that we <laughs> allow people to borrow. Uh, we get a lot of calls over the phone. What do I do? I do tell folks that if they're going to be doing any type of food preservation, whether it's simple blanching and freezing, they can contact the extension office and we will kind of walk them through that. Mm. Um, some folks don't even know what to do when you're talking shucking corn and, and things like that. Like, what do you mean? What do we do first? So uh, we can walk them step by step, but uh, it's nice to have the, the fresh produce but we try to get people to plan and use it and uh, store it properly as soon as possible. Uh, that way you won't lose the nutrients mm -hmm. in the food. And, and one of the problems is overcooking, isn't it? Yes. We love our vegetables to death. That's what I say. You know, <laughs> We cook them until they're mush, you know, and you don't have to do that. That's why I like the old pressure cookers or pressure canners um, mm -hmm. that folks use. And uh, even though in pressure canning is a process, is a long heat process to keep the preservatives uh, and to make sure that the foods are cooked to a certain temperature. But even beyond the canning and all that, just in terms of everyday cooking. Everyday cooking, we, they overcook. We tend to overcook. They overcook. overcook the vegetables. Um, that's why we, you know, in Extension at one point, we have promoted a lot of um, stir frying with little bits of oil, water, steam, that's it, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, and incorporating using fresh herbs and spices mm -hmm. to cut down on the, on the sugar, the fats, and the salts. Mm -hmm. Dr. Neby, you went on a personal quest. Mm -hmm and lost some weight recently, didn't you? Yeah, well, um, I was a uh, joke with my wife and some of my friends about that. Um, a few months ago, actually back in January, when I created this foundation that I um, did in my father's name as a means of trying to teach the community about uh, how to eat and, and, and how to become healthy, because in my practice, you see people come in and the blood pressures are high and, and there's every excuse why they don't want to take the medication but they're all overweight and you try to say well listen then just lose the weight and then you hear mm -hmm. the famous term well doc I don't eat that much you know I'm like yeah but you eat more than your your activity dictates but then I said to myself okay I'm about to start this foundation I'm about to start to teach people how they're supposed to live and then I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like okay um, you know it's gonna be kind of difficult to do that if you need to do that yourself so um, I said I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to go on this diet. I'm going to try to preach, live what I'm going to get ready to start to preach. So mm -hmm. I started my quest, um, you know, January 1. That was my New Year's resolution. 
I said I was going to be doing some commercials and some um, uh, public service announcements come April. So mm -hmm. uh, I said by that time I was going to be at least 45 pounds lighter than what I was, which I achieved that goal. <laughs> It was, uh, but but without I didn't starve myself to death. I didn't do any of these things that. But you fat did change diets. your eating habits. I changed didn't my you? eating habits. And I, tell us I, a little bit about what you did, how oh, you did that. Well, I'm laughing about the mush vegetables. <laughs> I, I can't stand mushy vegetables. So, I, but I, I really got on this kick of, um, you know, I, I trimmed exactly what I ate and I focused on vegetables, very much on less on meats. I think a lot of people's misconceptions are that. Like they hear this term, you know, where you eat oatmeal and, you know, all this stuff is so healthy. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm trying to tell them, I say, this is all, this is carbohydrates, you know, and you have to focus less on that, focus more on the on the fruits and vegetables and, and very, very lean meats. I mean, I really essentially had cut out a lot of red meat. I wasn't hardly eating much at all. I was all doing chicken, um, mm -hmm. turkey. Uh, I don't like fish that much, but I tried to acquire a taste for it <laughs> for the purpose of my quest, but that and vegetables. And I really stuck to it. I mean, I did not deviate. And that's where I think a lot of the problem comes is that dedication to what you're trying to achieve. But when you start having your friends die, you start mm -hmm. seeing your friends have heart attacks, you start seeing your friends um, having health issues that you know could have been prevented had they... Had they just eaten Yeah, you know. and, and, and I think a lot of healthcare professionals, we talked about this earlier, yeah. are, are overweight and uh, a lot of that is stress. Uh, I think you, when you work, I mean right now, I mean my day typically starts at 530 mm. and I'm uh, in the hospital rounding on patients then it's, it's, it's like an all day affair. And with the habit I found myself getting into is I would work and then I'd get home eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. And then, try and then to I eat, eat dinner. Right. And then I go to bed. Mm -hmm. And what happens is even though you may eat some things throughout the day, but typically you're grabbing things and you're eating and you're keeping moving and you just start moving. So again. a lot of it is our lifestyle um, and, and the way that we, we live yeah. and how we kind of try to accommodate food as opposed to making food more of a center in terms of, of the proper way to eat. But, you know, one of the staples of soul food, which a lot of us eat, is fried chicken and candied yams, grease and sugar, yum. <laughs> Chef Mike Stevenson shows us how to prepare these dishes in a much more healthy way. One of the most popular soul food dishes is southern fried chicken. Now, how do you make that nutritious? Well, I'm here with Chef Mike Stevenson who is going to show us how that is done. The first thing that we're going to do with the chicken is take the most flavorful part out of the chicken. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is gently remove the skin off that, off that piece of breast there. Okay. This is my daughter's favorite part, you know. It's, it's everyone's it's favorite skin. part. Actually, that's, but that's where all the cholesterol, all the trans fat, everything is right there. That's tons of flavor right there. So we're going to have to reintroduce <laughs> some flavor back to that. And the secret to this recipe actually is the Chef Mike Experience blend. Okay. So we're gonna add a little bit of that to the flour mixture, just a little bit. Put a couple dashes of Tabasco sauce in the marinade of the chicken. Take our chicken that's been marinating overnight. We're gonna add it to our flour mixture. We're gonna just knead that chicken. Once again, we're reintroducing those flavor elements back to the poultry. So we're gonna walk our chicken leg over to the grease. Be very careful. I like to use canola oil because it's zero trans fat zero saturated fat, and those are the fat items that kind of, kind of are not good for us. So once you get the grease nice and hot, you want to put it on a low simmer so the chicken can cook evenly throughout. So in about seven minutes, um, the chicken will be ready. It'll be nice and golden brown, like the other chicken you saw earlier. And we can dive right into the uh, candy yams. Okay. Okay. We are going to accent our southern fried chicken with a side dish, another very popular soul food side dish, candied yams. I don't know how you're going to do it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not going to be the ones that make your teeth hurt after you finish eating okay. them. They're going to be good for you. You're going to be real. You're going to feel real, real good about serving these to your guests. Okay. So we're going to start with some nice medium-sized yams. A lot of times in the grocery stores, you find the really, really large yams. They're good for feeding horses, but not for people. Okay. So you want to stay with a nice medium, medium-sized okay. yam right there. We use a standard-sized baking dish, and we're just going to start lining the yams up okay. after they're peeled and sliced, of course. And you want to slice them into about a half inch thickness. And these are going to go into the oven for about an hour and 10 minutes. We're going to use two cups of orange juice. Okay. 
you're going to use one tablespoon of vanilla. Instead of pure cane sugar, use the granulated brown sugar. It only has three, three grams of uh, carbohydrates and three grams of sugar. And the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to take one stick of margarine. Once again, the healthier side of soul food. We're going to use margarine instead, instead of, of butter. butter. Instead <laughs> of butter. We're going to cut this into six pieces. We're just going to place them around the yams. If you can grab that cinnamon, no calories, no carbs with that. So, so you can just have fun with the cinnamon. Yeah, you can huh? OD on the cinnamon, over. no problem at all. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to pour um, all of our mixture um, pretty much into the yams. Okay. You just want to make sure we coat them so the yams are floating nicely um, in the mixture. And they're going to steep in the oven. So first, they're going to come up to temperature, and it's going to allow all that flavor to just permeate right through the yams. Well, we're all done. Okay. Now comes the final. Final verdict. Drum roll. Mm. Lots of flavor. That's pretty great. Lots of flavor. Okay, it looked like, the, I could understand the fried chicken because it's taking the skin off, although it would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand how that makes it healthy. How about that margarine on those uh, yams? I defer to the expert <laughs> on that one. I stay away from it personally. Well, one of the things I, I tell folks is um, butter is okay if you use it in uh, moderation. Um, I personally would not have put a whole stick of margarine in okay. those yams. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I could uh, suggest that folks would do is just drizzle a small amount. You could cut off about maybe about a quarter of that and just drizzle it over the yams um, because it's just adding extra fat. Mm -hmm. He did do some good things. He did reduce the amount of sugar. Um, you didn't have to use the brown sugar. You could have used the cinnamon, but because folks are going from the old way of doing it. Exactly. You don't want to shock them Shocking. too much at one time because they might not try it mm -hmm. or might not uh, want to make the changes. But uh, using the orange juice is a good option uh, and opposed to lots of sugar. And uh, But for the most part, other than the butter or the uh, margarine, um, it did Thumbs reduce up. a lot of uh, a lot of the extra calories. Okay. Now there's the other soul food that we tend to use when we have those big family dinners and so forth. And you cannot have a soul food dinner without macaroni and cheese or dessert, but you can prepare these dishes with less fat and less sugar, and Chef Deidre Blount shows us how to do that. One of the most delicious side dishes when it comes to soul food is macaroni and cheese. Now one of our favorite chefs, Deidre Blount, is going to tell us how we can do this and it's gonna be good for us, right? <laughs> right. We're gonna start out with some of this, the same components of your traditional macaroni and cheese, okay. but we're gonna kinda of do a, a little spin on it because we're gonna use Parmesan cheese. So what we're gonna do is let's uh, go ahead and we'll put the, uh, the noodles in the, into the bowl. And I'm just using um, just regular macaroni. Uh, you could use a wheat pasta if that's your preference. Okay, what is what this? Is this is a garlic seasoning mixture that has some um, parsley, some herbs, some onion powder, and it's a salt-free product. Okay. So you use a dash of kosher salt mm -hmm. and a dash of and pepper. A dash of pepper. Okay. And you can kind of use it to your own discretion, but um, it's good just to have a little bit, maybe like a half a teaspoon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, add some of the Parmesan into the mixture, and then we'll save a little bit for the top. Okay, and I like to continue to mix it around thoroughly just to make sure everything is covered um, and everything is coated. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of the, ch of the cheddar to that as well. I'm going to add the sour cream or if you wanted to, to use a reduced fat milk I bet you're just going to end up with a, a dry dish that nobody really wants to eat. <laughs> well we don't want that. No not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so that the uh, sour cream mm. helps with that and then the fat free half and half will also help. Then we're going to add cheese across the top. You notice that in this recipe I did not use fat free cheese or low fat cheese right. um, because it doesn't really melt well. How long does it go into the oven and at what temperature? We're going to put this in the oven at 350 degrees and depending on the size of your container, we'll start it if it's really small for 15 minutes, but on your larger size pans, about 40 minutes or so. Okay, okay so you're just going to bake it until the, the center starts to um, um, get a little bit firm and the outer parts are, are just getting a little bit of caramelization around the, the edges. 
Now, you can't have a soul food meal without dessert. And I don't know how she's going to do it, but Dedra's going to show us how to bake peach popovers. I decided to use popovers because of the fact that they had a little bit less uh, fat and zero sugar uh, in them. But the, the texture of them were going to be a combination between something that you could use for a cobbler topping or you could use it for um, a strawberry shortcake or a, a peach shortcake type of recipe. So in your bowl, Lisa, add um, flour. You have a, about one cup of flour. Okay. And then to that, you're going to also add two eggs. Okay, so in my pan, I'm going to add some butter. All right, that's good, Lisa. Now to yours, add, a, add your vanilla and then add your milk. Okay, so that's about a teaspoon of vanilla and eight ounces of, of uh, 2% milk. Okay. In the recipe, you want to put either the ramekins or if you don't have a popover pan, you can use a muffin pan. Okay. Put those in the oven ahead of time so that they have the temperature of the oven. So the oven's at 450 degrees. Go ahead and put those in. And we're going to add just a little bit of brown sugar to that, just to bring the flavor up, which a lot of times in the soul food uh, kitchen, we have a tendency to overdo it with sugar. Then we're going to add a little bit of orange juice to it. Now tell me what the orange juice does. Um, it just kind of balances out the, uh, the extra sugar, and it's always a good complement to, uh, to peaches. Okay, we're going to add uh, a little bit of cornstarch to it, because the cornstarch is going to thicken it. We're going to take about two ounces of melted butter, and brush the inside of our ramekins so that, one, the popovers don't stick, but also it will give them some additional flavor as they cook. As they cook. Mm. We're going to put these in the oven at 450 for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to turn the oven down to 375 for the remainder of the time, which is between 20 and 30 minutes. You can leave now the did you just if pull you the to. did you just pull the pop over apart or do you cut it in a certain um, direction? You can just cut it. However, if you can split it in half, or you can leave it completely whole if you like. All right. Let's see how these. That's a pretty big peach. <laughs> that's very good. Thank you. Bonnie, that's what I heard you going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was pretty good. She, she gave a lot of uh, healthy options um, to use the white cheeses, which are much less fat than our traditional cheddar cheeses when you make macaroni and cheese. She didn't use l loads of butter or mm -hmm. margarine. And the um, dessert was just wonderful, um, having the natural juices from the uh, fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't need any additional sweeteners. Uh, so so we just need drink. to learn how to, to prepare food differently right. so that we can, can eat more healthy. Dr. Newby, you have a study yeah. that's going to be coming uh, about pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that and how that's going to help us to be healthier mm -hmm. in our community. Well, the uh, Newby Foundation um, went on this quest based on the things we talked about earlier, but the, uh, what I found characteristically is the problem is not so much do people want to do right. They want to know how to do right. And uh, it takes a lot of extra effort, not just a one-time, you know, kind of uh, like church fair or, or these mm -hmm. other things where you go and you talk to people, they get scared for a couple of days and then they go back to the old ways. This is a study that I designed looking to say, can we impact on your health by changing your lifestyle. So what we're doing is we've gone to four churches, two are going to be a control group, two are going to be the intervention group, and we're going to uh, enroll uh, 250 total hypertensive patients and 66 obese patients. And the whole point of this is to say, if we teach you those different things, we teach you about hypertension, what is hypertension, what is obesity, what are the things about that that mm -hmm. make you unhealthy over time. But in addition to that, we're going to be doing uh, in these kind of weekly classes, 
We're going to also be trying to teach people how to live right, how to eat right, how to exercise. What are the safe things? You, somebody may can't run on a treadmill. They may have to find other me mechanisms of exercise. But we want to emphasize it during the day as well. So if we want to find out more about the study and so forth, um, people can visit our website and mm -hmm. we will put your information on there so that they can, um, can contact you okay. um, if necessary. Thank you all so much for joining us. I think that this is a conversation that we need to continue having because we've got to all, I include myself, learn how to change our eating habits so that we can become healthier. And we didn't even get to the exercise part, but I think if we start with, with food and how we prepare it and what we do, um, that that will make a huge difference. So I want to thank Dr. Keith Newby and Ms. Beverly, uh, Bonnie Taswell, pardon me, and Beverly Sell <laughs> for joining us today. And when we come back, we're going to take a quick look at some uh, events happening here in Hampton Roads. Thank you for joining us today. Please visit our website, www.anotherview.tv, to find out all the recipes featured in today's show. And while you're there, sign up for our eView newsletter, a once a week reminder of upcoming show topics. Next week, another disease that disproportionately affects the African American community Alzheimer's disease. We'll have the facts and dispel the myths next week on Another View. We'll see you then. <laughs>